Are you looking for actually affordable smart shades for your home? Do you want something that's also super easy to set up? What about something that makes you feel like a Bond villain? Open living room shades. So stay tuned as we take a look at IKEA's solution for smart roller shades for your home. Hi everyone, it's Ryan with The Smart House. Today we're going to be taking a look at what is in my opinion the most popular new addition to my smart home. We're looking at IKEA's entry into the smart blind and shade market. The Furter, the Future, Fireter, whatever, I'll just call them IKEA smart shades. Much easier that way. Now I've purchased nine of these for the sunny side and the stairwell of my house. And so far I've loved them, except for when they don't work. But more on that later. These blinds, like the original Ford Model T, only come in one color here in the US, gray. Thankfully, it's a nice gray that seems to work in most places. Plus, they're blackout shades, so they mostly block out the sunlight in the room, except for what escapes around the edge. But they don't have any customization options unless you want to hack them. The only choice you have is the width of the shade. They come in sizes ranging from 23 inches to 48 inches, in increments of four. All shades are about 76 inches long. If they don't fit your windows, then you're out of luck. Other than the shortcomings on the options, these shades do pack a punch. They are battery operated, which means no need to run power up to the shade. The kit comes with a rechargeable 2600 milliamp hour battery pack that can be charged over micro USB. At this time, you cannot put a larger battery in due to their use of a proprietary connector, but I'm sure some intrepid hacker is already working on that or an ability to attach the solar panel. Now in my testing, these seem to last about three months between changes. So I went ahead and purchased an extra battery pack. That battery pack I keep topped off and I just swap the pack to a different blind each week. Now these blinds use a standard Zigbee radio. So of course you can use them with Ikea's own Trajophy hub, but that also means that you can use it with any other brand of Zigbee Hub. It looks like folks have already written integrations with Hubitat, SmartThings, ZHA, and Zigbee2MQTT. Now here in my house, we use the Zigbee2MQTT integration for all of our Zigbee items. And we have a lot of Zigbee items. As long as my Zigbee network is healthy, these blinds are responsive most of the time. Now, as we further discuss Zigbee, let's look at what comes in the box. Now, included in the box, of course, is the shade and the aforementioned battery. Also included are the mounting brackets needed to connect the shades to the windows. But note, screws are not included. Thankfully, I was just replacing existing shades, so I reused those existing screws. But make sure you grab some from the hardware store or your junk drawer before you get started. Also in the box is a very long USB-A to micro USB cable. This is used to charge the battery. Now, one of the coolest things included in the kit is a USB-powered Zigbee repeater. Now, IKEA says you need to have one of these installed within about 32 feet of the shade in order to keep the communication strong. I have one in front of each shade group and scattered around the house, because why not? Also included is an AC to USB adapter for the repeaters. Plus, the repeaters have a female USB port on them that you can use the same plug to charge the battery. Very clever. Now, if you're not using the IKEA hub, you can still use the repeaters. They work very well with my Zigbee to MQTT network and have really increased the reliability. Finally included in the package is an IKEA shade remote. This remote comes prepared to the shade from the factory. So if you don't want to use a hub, you can control the shade right from the remote. They've also included a handy magnetic mount for these remotes. So it's super easy for your kids to steal them and hide them from you. But you can pair these with your hub of choice. I have them scattered all throughout my house to control lights and shades. So I have my shades connected to Zigbee 2MQTT and then on to Home Assistant where they're grouped together. The beauty of this is I can expose the group to my Google Assistant and then when I give it a command like open kitchen shades or set kitchen shades to 50%, the entire group responds without me having to address each individual shade. I'm also using a blueprint that I found in Home Assistant to build the automation needed for the remotes. Also making it a super easy setup. Now that we've seen the main features and what comes with it, let's look at how to set up the shades. Now installation is quite easy. Grab a ladder or step stool, a drill, and the appropriate bits. Double check that the blind is the correct fit before drilling. Please note that unlike most roller shades, the left bracket is not installed all the way to the left. This is because of the electronics. I'm assuming they want to keep as much metal away from the Zigbee radio as possible. So make sure you measure how far away from the wall that you need to start before drilling your holes. Also make sure the right bracket is a little bit away from the edge of the window for a good fit. Now line up the bracket and drill two holes. Repeat this for the other side. Now screw in the two brackets. Make sure they're straight or you will not be able to snap in the shade. Finally, line the back of the shade up to the back of the bracket and rotate the shade upward till it's flat. You'll need to push in on the plastic tabs on each bracket until you hear a click. That way you know it's in place. There, now you've got the shade installed. Now before we get everything paired, make sure you charge the battery until the white LED turns off. The length of this will depend on how big of a charger you have connected. Once the pack is full, open the battery drawer on the left and insert the battery with the contacts in towards the back and down. Once the battery snaps into place, close the door. All right, let's move on to pairing. Now, if you're gonna use the shade without a hub, just put the battery in your remote, stick them out to the wall, and you're done. But if you're pairing with a hub, we have a few more steps. Now, this is a tip that I picked up from the Zigbee2MQTT forums. 
you need to pair your items in this particular order. Number one, the repeater. Number two, the shade. Number three, the remote. Now to pair the repeater, put your hub into pairing mode and then press and hold the little button with a paper clip or sim remover. Make sure you feel the little click of the button, it's easy to miss. Hold this down for about five seconds until you see the light start to pulse. Once you've paired it and confirmed it in your hub or app, let's move to the shade. Now for the shade, here's another trick. Grab an AC extension cord and plug it into the closest outlet to the shade. Then plug your repeater into this. Hold the repeater right on the battery door when pairing. This makes it so much easier for it to be found by your hub. Now put your hub into pairing mode and then press and hold the up and down buttons on the shade until the light starts blinking. Keep holding the repeater here until the light goes off, confirming that everything is paired to your hub. If you do run into an issue, pull the battery and try again. It might take a few attempts. Once the shade or shades have been paired, you can return the repeater to its home. Finally, for the remote, open up the back of the remote, which exposes the pairing button. If you haven't already, put the battery in. Once your hub is in pairing mode, press the pairing button on the remote four times. The red light will pulse. Once it's paired, the light will turn off. Now go ahead and close up the remote and you're all set up and ready to go. As I mentioned before, the max length of these shades is about 76 inches long. But what if you don't have a window that big? Well, you can set the shade to whatever length you want it to stop at. To do this, you need to first clear the existing length. This is done by putting the shade all the way to the top, then double pressing either up or down, not both. Then the shade should retract and then extend a little bit. Now, by using the manual controls on the side of the shade, set the shade to whatever your desired length. If you happen to overshoot, you can always use the up button to fix it. Once the shade is at the correct height, you can stop the shade by pressing the up or down button one time. Then to set the final length, either double tap up or down, and you should see the shade move a little bit down and then back up again. That's it. Now when the shade is closing, it'll stop right here. Before I jump into my overall thoughts on these shades, if you've gotten any help from this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up. That helps other people find this video. And of course, for more content like this, make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications. I have several new product videos coming out over this holiday season. Let's jump into the final section and I'll give you my pros and cons on these shades. So here are what I see are the biggest strengths and weaknesses of these shades. Now, the most significant advantage, I think, is the cool factor. This isn't exclusive by any means to these IKEA shades, but the cost and time to get there are so small that it becomes a lot more accessible in my opinion. There's nothing cooler than having Google open your shades first thing in the morning or setting up an automation to open these shades when you're not at home on a cold sunny day to get some free heat. I know my wife absolutely loves them. Next, we come to the price. These shades range from $130 to $180 US depending on the width. And that might seem like a lot for a shade, but if you look at some of the comparable shades out there on the market, you'll see that these are much cheaper. Looking at Home Depot, their room darkening shades by Bali with similar size and specs, Z-Wave controller, remote, and battery, comes in on sale around $360, with the standard price sitting at $560. Then we start looking at something like a Lutron shade, it gets even pricier. Of course, you get a lot more freedom of fabric and other options as a trade-off for that cost. There are other options if you have already existing shades with a chain like the Akara Retrofit Kit, or you can build your own with something like the Xiaomi Motors but nothing really is as cheap or as easy as these IKEA shades. Now on the subject of ease, that's our next pro, ease of installation. Now it might take you a few extra minutes to get the hang of installing these, but after the first couple, I could get a shade up in under 15 minutes. These were actually just as easy as the original shades that I put on when we moved into this house. Then finally, last on my list of pros is the battery power. One of the reasons it took me so long to consider doing smart shades was because most of the options needed to be wired into the house. Because my builder didn't include any power above the windows, I would have had to either have ran exposed wiring down the edge of the window or cut into the sheetrock. Neither would have been a good idea. But because these shades are battery powered, that isn't an issue. Plus, changing batteries is pretty easy. I really only have one shade where I need to get up on a step stool to reach it, so that's a bonus. Now on the other side of the coin, here are the things that I don't like about them or I think you might not like about them. Of course, the big one for my wife was the lack of options for the shade colors. I like the gray, but she wanted something else. Now I suspect if you wanted to go all DIY, you could remove the shade material from the roller and install your own as long as it's not too thick to fit once the shade rolls itself all the way up. Another disadvantage that didn't really hit us but might hit you is the sizes. Thankfully, my house was built in 2015, so all the windows are a uniform size. So IKEA carried the exact size that we needed. But if you live in an older house, that might not be the case. So if yours don't fit, then unfortunately this is not the option for you. Now the last major con that I had with these shades, and this is the big one, is I've found these shades will either disconnect or fall out of sync. As I mentioned before, Home Assistant controls my shades as a cover group. So when I send the command to open, close, or open to a certain percentage, Home Assistant tells each shade to go into that location. But if the shade was asleep or somehow missed the command, nothing will happen with it. And you end up with this. 
one shade open while the rest are closed, or worse, a shade that stops halfway. Now, if the shade is still online, you can just reissue the same command and the shade will usually comply. I have thought about building a virtual shade in an automation in Home Assistant that will take the command to change position and then checks each group member. So if one member doesn't respond, it will reissue that command and then notify you if it doesn't respond. Now, when I first set these shades up, I had a ton of issues, but that made me learn a lot more about Zigbee and its susceptibility to interference. Once I cleaned up my Wi-Fi access points channels and got the Zigbee stick away from interference, it's improved tenfold. Occasionally, a shade will either lock up or completely fall out of the Zigbee mesh. But fixing this is typically as easy as removing the battery for about five seconds, and once you reinsert it, it'll come back on. Like most of my home automation projects, a few issues did crop up, but overall, it's been definitely worth it for us. We spent a tad over $1,200 to get these shades set up, but we absolutely love them. Here's a tip, check the IKEA's as is section. I got four of these shades for 40% off because someone returned them. I did have one that didn't function, but I was able to return it. But your mileage may vary, so make sure you always take your window dimensions to IKEA just in case you run across some. So if you're interested in checking these out and are fortunate enough to live close to an IKEA, then I've got a link to the shades and the extra battery in the description. So you can make sure that they actually have them in your size before heading out to the IKEA store. Now, if there's something that I should have covered or you have a question about these shades, please feel free to leave me a note down in the comments or jump on our Discord server. Now, if this video has piqued your interest in setting up your smart home, then I've got a playlist right here that you'll wanna watch on getting started with Home Assistant, my smart home brain of choice. Thank you again and I'll see you on the next video.